My name is Karen Newman. I am the coordinator of the uh, UK-based Population and Sustainability Network. And recently PSN has been involved in coordinating something called the Population and Climate Change Alliance, which is working to bring organizations uh, from North America and Europe, but also from, um, from the Global South, that we have members in Ethiopia and in Madagascar, who are working on the ground on the connection between population dynamics and, um, well, in one case, climate change, and the other case, marine conservation, deforestation those sorts of issues. I think the links between population and uh, climate change, sustainable development more generally, uh, although those links are critical and uh, complex, they are controversial. And what I think we have to do is unpick each of those so that we can sort of look at those in a bit more detail. So to take them sort of backwards, uh, they're controversial because population programs uh, were very controversial in the 60s for what seems to me to be fairly good reason. Um, although I firmly believe that the coercive programs were the exception and not the rule, uh, they did happen. We know that there were coercive sterilization programs. The one-child family norm in China has fixed the global imagination around population to be uh, around doing something which constricts people's and women's choices rather than expands women's possibility to take control of their lives, which is what people who are interested in sexual and reproductive health and rights, of course, want to do. So where does the controversy come from? It comes from the idea that now that the word population is more in the atmosphere, there's this idea of, oh, okay, those guys are back. That's coercion. Let's not go there. Let's not touch it with a barge pole. And what I see as the major challenge is uh, to get people to say, no, 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 we do need to look at population and you can do that and also care about rights. So that's where the sort of kernel of the controversy comes in. The links are complex because you can't say it in a nanosecond why the two things come together. Um, if I'm talking about the need to expand the availability of family planning because I'm very concerned that there are 215 million women out there who don't have access to contraceptive services that I take for granted, but you're interested in talking about marine conservation or deforestation. The link between family planning forests, what's your problem? The link is around population dynamics, population pressures, the demand on the world's non-renewable resources that population growth means, and also other dynamics, not just growth, urbanization, migration, what these actually mean for consumption of the world's non-renewable resources. Why is it complex? Well, let's take the example of China. So at some point in the first decade of this century, China overtook the USA as the world's huge, largest emitter of carbon. Okay. Well, now, at one level, you would say, well, that has to be a function of the denominator of the population, because you've got whatever it is, 260 million people in the USA, and you've got 1.2 billion people in China. So that's obviously the case. And it is the case. But how fair is it to say that without in the same nanosecond saying, but most of the carbon that was emitted in China was to manufacture the goods that will, of course, be consumed in the West. So you have what I would sort of almost describe as a sort of kaleidoscope of complexity, which makes it more difficult to say in a sound by, OK, population, sustainable development, it's the same conversation, which I believe it to be. So I've had a look at the sort of controversial, I've had a look at why it's complex, but I do think it's critical. And the reason why I think it's critical is that as a result of people wanting to place the distance between those coercive family planning programs in the 60s and the way that we do reproductive health now, which is about uh, making sure that women have access to a whole range of reproductive health care services, which include access to different methods of contraception. It includes uh, sexually transmitted infection, prevention, diagnosis and treatment. It includes getting to and through pregnancy safely, antenatal care, emergency obstetric care, those kinds of things. Because it's such a sort of large package, um, there is a sense that people think, okay, this reproductive health thing, this is, this is too much. We can't really get, get hold of this. And what, what I think we need to do is keep people focused on the fact that these are women's rights. So we start with women's rights. We never really weren't talking about women's rights. But we, at the same time, have to say this is relevant if you care about sustainable development and the world's non-renewable resources.